On January 17, 1994, the Earth shook for 30 seconds, a ripple in time that would forever change the lives of countless people living in the Los Angeles basin. The 6.6 .6 Northridge quake slapped freeways to the ground and ripped hundreds of buildings apart. As aftershocks continued to rumble through the region, the destruction mounted. Property damage soared into the billions of dollars, and thousands of families found themselves instantly homeless, unable to get to their jobs, and without the basic necessities of life. Those who were lucky enough to escape the direct devastation of the quake were forced to share in the common experience of its aftermath, a severely crippled transportation system. Portions of six different freeways were damaged by the Tembler. Eleven elevated highway structures at eight different locations were destroyed. As a result, getting to and from work on the complex web of LA's freeways was nearly impossible. Well, I can move to the valley. So it's taken about so another 45 minutes extra just to get through the street to the freeway. I haven't got to the freeway yet. What used to be barely tolerable commuter congestion had turned into every commuter's worst nightmare. With the freeway system devastated and commuters desperately seeking a solution, Metrolink, LA's fledgling commuter rail system, seized the opportunity to show its stuff to LA and the world. In operation for barely a year, Metrolink typically served about 9,800 passengers a day throughout its four-county area. Within hours of the devastating jolt, Metrolink was back up and running transporting almost 32,000 people into downtown LA every day. Within a few days, Metrolink had expanded its operations to pick up quake-stranded commuters in the towns of Palmdale and Lancaster. 72 hours after the decision was made by all the required agencies, stations and facilities were built and 53 miles of additional track were pressed into service. By taking advantage of existing freight lines, Metrolink trains began helping people cope with an impossible situation. It's been an eye-opening experience for many commuters who vow they'll stay with the train system even after the freeways are rebuilt. After struggling for recognition as a viable commuter transportation system, Metrolink has become an important part of the Los Angeles commuter mix, proving beyond a doubt that rail can really make a difference and it points up two of the best features of rail as a commuter system. Rail can recover rapidly in any disaster, so it's literally always available. And second, commuter rail can easily expand to meet the needs of commuters in any existing rail corridor. Southbound 680, injury accident with an overturned vehicle blocking at least two lanes now. Emergency. Northern California is by no means immune to the threat of freeway disasters. The Loma Prieta earthquake proved that. But here in the East Bay, it's not just earthquakes that make our freeway systems vulnerable. All too frequently, a stall, a spill, or a serious accident brings traffic to a complete standstill. Many of our freeways are at or near capacity, leaving them vulnerable 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our smaller towns and outlying rural areas are still growing, and these people will need to make their way to and from work. Well, there is a way out of this mess, a way to get thousands of commuters off the roads, a way to give them a relaxing, productive, and safe commute. Rail. Adding commuter rail to the mix could quickly ease congestion in major corridors here in the East Bay. Along highways 80, 680, and 4, from Fairfield and Sassoon City, through Benicia and Martinez, and along the bay to Crockett and Richmond, on to West Oakland, there's 50 miles of existing double tracks that are currently being used to haul freight and carry passengers. A second commuter corridor that could easily be served by rail roughly parallels Highway 4. From Tracy to Brentwood, Antioch, Pittsburgh, Concord, and Martinez, the 60-mile line could then follow the I-80 corridor line on into West Oakland. Some stations already exist along these two corridors, like this one, here in Emeryville. Together, these two corridors would carry 1.6 million passengers every year. The 50-mile corridor from West Oakland to San Jose is inadequately served by buses in Highway 880. BART service terminates at Fremont. 
commuter rail service can instantly connect the employment centers in Oakland and San Jose. Studies show that 1.4 million passengers a year would use commuter rail to travel this corridor. This missing link in our rail network would also serve as one connection between East and West Bay train commuters. The Highway 580 corridor ties Stockton to the Bay Area through the Altamont Pass. Commuter trains could service customers in Stockton, Manteca, Tracy, Livermore, Pleasanton, Fremont, and Santa Clara through to San Jose using existing rail lines. With the reinstitution of rail service across the Dumbarton Bridge, commuter rail service from the 580 corridor could also reach San Francisco along highways 84 and 101. This would connect East Bay commuters to mid and upper peninsula cities as well. In order to increase speeds and reduce travel time along the 580 corridor, the 80 miles of track for this line would need significant upgrading. At startup, though, this line could expect ridership of 350,000 annually. This figure would more than triple if San Francisco service was added. Starting a commuter rail service in the East Bay would be a relatively easy undertaking. Rail lines already exist in key corridors where commuters need new service, and stations already exist in many towns. Capital outlay would be low in comparison to extensions of existing BART or light rail systems. Permits would be fairly easy to procure, and the system could be up and running in just a few months. We know that commuter trains are accepted in the Bay Area. Every day, more than 22,000 people ride Caltrain commute rail service on the peninsula. And since Caltrain's recent extension, people as far south as Gilroy are taking advantage of rail commuting. To show that commuter trains can work in the East Bay, Southern Pacific ran demonstration trains along three of the corridors that we've discussed. In 1992 and 93, people had a chance to ride LA-based Metrolink trains from Sassoon City, Brentwood, and other East Bay cities to their jobs. It's been really great. I could uh, go on for hours about how much more comfortable and uh, convenient this is for me to go to work uh, than the bus and uh, you know if there was any way I could pay for doing this I'd certainly pay to do this you know I think the service is just really outstanding. It's been a wonderful experience uh, I think I'm a true example of how some people are addicted to driving their car I can easily give up my car if this train was in place um, I have a family at home come home now relaxed and can spend some quality time with my kids Commuter rail at this time is a logical solution. It's something that's within our reach uh, financially. It's a, with very limited capital cost. You can provide commuter service. I think the voters have, have spoken. They're telling us, yes, we want rail service in this corridor. And I think it's a very Im important link to the metropolitan transportation system. Commuting by rail is already part of the overall Bay Area commute scene. We now need to utilize it fully in the East Bay, and we don't have to spend billions of dollars to do it. Commuter rail is an untapped, lower-cost resource for East Bay residents. Commuter rail can recover rapidly in any disaster, and commuter rail can rapidly expand to meet the needs of commuters in any existing rail corridor. But rail can only be part of the commuter mix if we take action and let our local, state, and federal representatives know of our feelings. Only then can we make commuter rail a vital part of our Bay Area transportation network.